so good morning everyone and once again welcome to our research stat lec lecture series since last one month we got the great response for this lecture series and i'm definitely sure ki each and every students get the benefits of this lecture series for today's lecture series i would like to invite and welcome dr vinay pawar sir sir is md in ayurved sahita and phd in sanskrit sir is recently working as a associate professor in department of basic principle in dr d y patil university college of ayurved nerul mumbai sir has done lots of work in research field and also published lots of articles so without wasting much time i would like i like to welcome dr vinay pawar sir and request him to start our today's session please sir you can continue sir thank you madam so, let me share my ppt yes sir oh, done ppt is visible can you see the ppt yes sir yes sir yes sir okay okay thank you okay first of all i would like to say thanks to organizers for inviting me to share my views on the topic of parametric and non parametric test uh this is one of the important topics uh for md bms md as well as phd students uh this code i use many a times in my lectures or almost in my all my lectures when the why is clear the how is easy so the topic which is given to me in your lecture series is parametric and non parametric test then why one should know uh, the parametric and non parametric test because if you go wrong in applying those tests your result would not be valid or result would not be generalized to the population so it is required like uh, you have to do uh, for md you have to do your thesis work for phd you have to do your thesis work and for thesis work we collect data and data has to be analyzed in a proper way to come to conclusion valid conclusion and therefore this become the inevitable part of our curriculum of our research journey so it is said that like uh, when you collect data uh, from collection of data to presentation of data summarizing data organizing data to analysis of results and to come to conclusion or to derive conclusion or to make inferences uh, we all require that all these things come under statistics right but they say that there are lies damn lies and statistics means you can mold the statistics as you require so if you mold the statistics you won't be able to come to conclusion or valid conclusion you may not get the valid conclusion which can be generalized or the main thing is that reproducibility if somebody reproduces the methods he may or may not get the same results so you can therefore it said that facts are stubborn but statistics are more reliable so uh, if you don't want to go for this uh, facts will remain the same either the drug will work the procedure will work or it will not work in the given condition but you can mold the statistics so you should be more cautious when you use statistics and mainly the statistical test to analyze data and therefore with this introduction uh, what is the purpose of like the purpose of this lecture is selecting a statistical test or test of significance you can see the picture over here i have given you picture of mintra right the look good code all of you must have done uh, online shopping online shopping we were not used to for this online shopping before covid era but after this covid era uh, we all have started this online shopping and all what do we do i just want to know, i just want to tell you that when we go for mintra uh, shopping online shopping on mintra we have so many uh, we have so many options over there right for i like i just want to buy one shirt right but there may be a, there are thousands of shirts available on mintra so how will i select one shirt out of thousand shirts so i'll be using various filters right the filters will be their size price pattern uh, 
so many things are uh, so many uh, filters are there we apply those filters and we come to very few shirts and out of those few shirts 10 12 15 shirts i'll select one which i like right which i don't have in my wardrobe like that uh, before that in the design pattern and all so out of 1000 shirts i could select one shirt because of these patterns and these patterns or uh, because of these filters actually so this filter applying these filters to select one this, this is called as a directive method of logical analysis. So, so many statistical tests are available. Parametric tests are there, non-parametric tests are there. So many tests are available. So, as per the data, which test to be applied? So, we have to apply directive method of logical analysis to select that particular uh, particular test. Right? So, you know types of statistics are though. Uh, descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. A descriptive statistics deals with uh, which the things which are required to describe the data, like what are the methods of collection of data, presentation in various forms like tabular form, graphical, diagrammatic form, finding averages like mean, median, mode, or you just want to find out um, stand, uh, standard deviation and uh, measures of variability. The inferential statistics, we try to analyze data, the techniques which are used to analyze data, making an uh, estimates and drawing conclusions from limited information and all means what how uh, you infer the data which you have collected you infer it and you go from sample to population for uh, inference uh, to take out the inference from the given data so in short we can call it as there are two types of statistics descriptive statistics and inferential statistics we have this thing today uh, the part the, the topic which is given to me comes under inferential statistics where we'll be applying that we'll be applying various statistical tests to come to conclusion or making inferences then data is of two types you know you must have done this thing data is of two types qualitative data or quantitative data qualitative data is also called as categorical data whereas quantitative data is also called as numerical data uh, categorical data is further divided into nominal and ordinal whereas numerical data is further divided into discrete and continuous data so these are the various types of data you must have done in your previous lectures so i'm not going in detail so why one should know type of data because uh, the data the type of data in a study collected in a study will determine with how the data is to be presented means whether you have to go for pie chart or you have to go for histogram you have to go for line chart or map or you have to go for uh, map diagram and all so how data is to be presented is decided by the type of data in the same manner type of data will decide which test of significance is to be used so that is very important to know type of data when you go for analysis of data then next point the thing which you know which you should know that study design to decide the statistical test you should know study design it is said that a badly designed study can never be retried, whereas a poorly analyzed one can usually be reanalyzed. So you can go for reanalysis, but your study design should be proper. And the study design will decide how the data is to be collected and how data is to be analyzed. So we have different, like this need for study design. Why? Otherwise, th this, this thing will happen. Like you cannot have this, like uh, somebody started making the railway rule from one side and another person from the other side and when they come together it happened like this why because you haven't decided your study design properly in the beginning of it, or you have failed in planning the study as you all know that we have three steps in research or three uh three major steps involved in research are planning operation and report we are at operational age operational uh phase at this point of time so if you go wrong in planning your operation would not be or will not be of success, right? So types of research studies, you know, what are the research studies we have that uh, experimental studies, observational studies, anti experimental studies, you can have non-randomized or randomized observational studies, you can have cohort, case control, cross-section or ecological study, right? Then statistical research, you have decided uh, which study design you are going to use, which type of data you are going to collect and all. Then we come to statistical inferences, like we have moved from uh, descriptive statistics to inferential statistics. 
so inferential statistic we have the observer or experimenter wants to know the significance of the difference he has observed in his results as compared with that of population or with that of another world nowadays the students uh, md or phd students are not allowed to go for single group studies they are asked to go for double group or control studies comparator studies only so obviously comparator will be your placebo in rare condition or it can be standard control right which has been which has proved its safety and efficacy in the previous right so at the end of the study everyone wants to know uh, your your study result or your uh, whether your drug group or treatment group is better or worse than or it is uh, comparable to the uh, to the other group or not you just want to know or the the difference you have observed has to be uh, has to be expressed in terms of probability like p value all of you know about p value so how to uh, take out that p value and the difference which you have observed is occur has occurred by chance or uh, is has occurred it's a real variability like you must have read if you are using dk margin you must have read about uh, real variability and biological variability so the, the difference which you have observed is due to biological variability or by chance or it's a real variability which has which has occurred by external factors playing in the role playing the role in the condition so two things are there in that and so we just want to know about this thing so what do we do uh, while making a statistical inferences either we go for estimation of population parameter from a sample statistic like this is called as a as in the beginning of the lecture i have told you by example of minfra i have told you uh, deductive method of logical analysis right when uh, from everything we go to something to a selective one here we are going in the another way or in the opposite way in the reverse way we are going from something to everything this is called as a inductive method of logical analysis what do you mean by inductive method of logical analysis like uh, if you are like you must be doing this example like if you have uh, rice in a vessel if you are cooking rice in a vessel how will you check whether whole lot of rice is cooked or not right that is called as a inductive method of logical analysis you can find out the sample statistic and from sample values you try to estimate the population parameter population value that is the aim that is drawing the conclusion to basic method and obviously testing of hypothesis of population parameter that you know this thing that like, uh, we have a level of significance or we have uh, confidence interval confidence limit mean plus or minus 1.96 sse uh, sample mean plus or minus 1.96 sse will contain your population mean in 95% cases uh, then mean plus or uh, sample mean plus or minus 2.5 sse will contain uh, some population mean in 99% of cases and all that is called as a, this is called statistical inferences or estimation of population parameter from sample size that is based on your normal distribution normal flow Right. So uh, we select we set a level of significance. You all know that is confined to p. Uh, we we set p value. Like all of you must have written your uh, synopsis, MD synopsis, PhD proposals, and all. There we give plan for statistical analysis. And plan for statistical analysis, you have to mention your level of significance. LOS level of significance set at five percent, one percent, point five percent. Generally, we go for five percent level of significance. what does it mean 5% level of significance means what out of 100 cases or out of 100 attempts uh, it can uh, in 5% cases it can occur by chance but in 95% cases it has occur it, it's a real variability it cannot occur by chance so when you say significant significant at 5% level of significance insignificant at 5% level of significance or we say p is greater than 0.05 or p less than 0.05 that means it can occur by chance or it cannot occur by chance but it is like that so we just we just try to find out whether the change can occur by chance or cannot occur by chance whether it's a biological variability or it's a real variability in other ways you can say that we just trying to find out testing the hypothesis there are two statistical hypotheses you must have written in your synopsis uh, null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis Null hypothesis says that there is no significant difference between the two values. Like A is equal to B. If you are comparing two groups, there is no difference by treatment A and treatment B. No significant difference. Like both the drugs will give the same results. Or alternate hypothesis will say A is not equal to B. The difference will be statistically significant. Either A is greater than B or B is greater than B. So we have we 
try to like conclusion mein kya hota hai what do we have an, in conclusion we try to analyze or we try to accept either we accept null hypothesis and reject alternative hypothesis or vice versa means what we accept null alternative hypothesis or reject null hypothesis it is like that right type 1 type 2 error you must have done this thing like when you when you change the level of significance from 5% to uh, 7% 8% 10% and all that it increases your level of means what it, you may get false positive result but you want that drug for that particular probability to enter in the market very fastly or you are not concerned about whether it is much significant or not then you can go for type 1 error or type 2 error means what you want to make your study more stringent means you have shown that your drug works better at 5% level of significance but you want to check that it works at 5 to 2% level of significance or 1% level of significance there uh, a type 2 error will be there so one tail two tail test you must be knowing about this concept also one tail and two tail test means what whether you will be operating on both sides of the curve or you will be operating on one side of the curve like one tail test kahan pe use hoga like in placebo control trials in placebo control trials your standard drug cannot be worse than the uh, placebo it can be equal to placebo or it can be better than placebo so you will be operating on the only one side of the curve or in case of figure in case of in case of height sorry in case of height you will be operating on one side only uh, it cannot lower the or it cannot decrease the height either height will remain same or it will increase so in case of height you will be having one tail test but if you are comparing a particular drug with the like if we take example of uh, amlodipine and rasagandhavati or jatamansi ganavati right so um, uh, whether both of drug will lower the blood pressure or not of that person so i it can be a standard controlled drug amlodipine is a standard controlled drug right so i am just comparing this two drug so either rasagandha vatti or jatamansi ganavati may work better than the amlodipine or may, it will be equal or less than so will be operating on both sides of the curve there you go for two tail test so in, con, in standard control studies we go for two tail test whereas in placebo control studies we go for one tail hypothesis test i think this is clear to all of you then i come to my topic that is about parametric and non parametric test so what are the parametric and non parametric test what are the parametric and non parametric test we have parametric set based on assumption about a distribution like it is based on particular assumption or distribution like right? all of you know gaussian distribution that we apply that uh, you must have done that normal distribution or normal co means what mean plus or minus what is happening over here why an it so parametric and non parametric test based on assumption about the distribution of population from which the sample was taken like you must be knowing about normal distribution and normal co right so normal distribution uh, in case of normal distribution normal co mean plus or we know about continuous data when you have large distribution large sample size and small class interval uh, you will get that co which is called as a normal co and in that normal co you will be having that three assumptions you know mean plus or minus 1 st contains 68% of observation mean plus or minus uh, 1.93 st contains 95% of observation and mean plus or minus 2.5 st contains 99% of observation so if your data follow this parametric assumption if this assumption then you can go for parametric test or parametric statistic uh, you will uh, the well known test a very famous test is student test test parametric paired and paired and all that will see and if, if your data do not follow normal distribution then obviously you have to go for non parametric test or non parametric statistic you must have heard the names of uh, wilcoxon chi square man with me and all okay so parametric population in when uh, when the population is well known assumptions made about the population sample data based on distribution applicable for continuous variables and it is more powerful like right? 
parameter tests are applicable only to continuous variables i hope you are you know about continuous variables like height weight measured facts they come under continuous variable where parametric tests are applicable and which are more powerful but in case of non parametric other tests like discrete data you have ordinal data like uh, like most of the ayurvedic parameter most of the ayurvedic uh, symptom parameter like they are on grade grade 0 grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 grade 4 and all so now there we go for non parametric statistics or non parametric tests which is less powerful compared to parametric data or parametric tests okay parametric statistics are applied to uh, are more for as i have already told you parametric statistics are more powerful but they are applicable to continuous variables only non parametric statistics often use discrete variables discrete variables means counted facts or it can be ordinal ordinal data also or we have counted facts or we have uh, macnema and all we have nominal data also in that case right then the thing which i have taken it from uh, the very well known book statistics at square one written by swinsbow and mj campbell the famous book is there which i use for reference uh, they have given uh, one chapter is there how to select the statistical test how to select a design and statistical test the name of the chapter is and there they have given three criteria to select the statistical test what are the three criteria are to be applied while selecting a statistical test i have told you these are the filters as i have told you that i have given you example of mintra shopping on mintra online site so how do you apply filter the same filter these are the filters to be applied to select one test out of numerous tests we have so what is the main study objective are the data independent and what type of data are being measured that we'll see first thing what is the main study hypothesis whether you are going for a uh, like there there are studies which do not have hypothesis like you know there are basically there are two types of studies um, observational studies and interventional studies under observational studies we have descriptive and analytical studies most of the descriptive studies most of the descriptive studies been example i can give prevalence studies like all of you know arogya setu app in arogya setu app you can see how many patients are suffering from covid 19 disease at this point of time we have used that arogya setu app now uh, from march or april 2020 since last two years we are using that is one of the prevalence studies you can get the read down but we do not have hypothesis over here see we just want to know see what is there how many patients are there suffering from covid 19 mild moderate or severe cases at this point of time in may in april 2022 so there is no hypothesis and if there is no hypothesis there is no statistical test you can go for only uh, a descriptive statistics means you need not to go for uh, uh, an inferential statistic you can you can go for uh, descriptive statistics means what actual numbers and percentages are enough for that hypothesis can be confirmatory hypothesis or exploratory hypothesis it can be suggested by data confirmatory means what whether smoking causes lung cancer or not the relationship you want to show uh, exposure outcome relationship or cause and effect relationship in your so you just confirm the hypothesis and exploratory suggested by the data like exploratory you just want to know whether it works or not particular drug com- compared to be the other drug other treatment modality and all right so you can have different hypothesis and depending on the hypothesis the study uh, or the, the statistical test will be decided no single study can support a whole series of you cannot have n number of hypotheses for a single study so otherwise your study would not be uh, would not be suffi- sufficient to focus on one hypothesis or you may not be able to uh, focus on one conclusion one aim of the study main aim of the study so limit your hypothesis decide your hypothesis and your hypothesis will tell you which statistical test is to be applied like when you have a single group study whether uh, this uh, if it example of chavanprash whether chavanprash is useful as a immunology as a immunological booster in in general population or not single group study right or like which which tests are to be applied for immunological parameter like you will take il6 il12 uh, uh, tnf alpha igg antibodies and all if you want to go for which test to be applied when you have single group study but when you go for two group studies when one group will be will receive chavanprash and second group will receive their regular diet and all no chavanprash will be given to them 
so if you want to compare then which tests are to be applied uh, if you want to show relationship between smoking and lung cancer virudha har and kush uh, any type of skin disorders and all, which tests are to be applied so that test is decided by your main study hypothesis then are the data independent this is very important that the whether data are independent or not like uh, whether data is de derived from the same individual like in case of i have told i have written over here ophthalmology and optometry in case of optometry ophthalmology because uh, many cases, many uh, research studies come uh, from optometry and ophthalmology come for analysis to me and there is a problem that if you are comparing one eye with the other eye if you compare one eye with the other eye but both the eyes from the same person like you must have you must be knowing about, uh, you must have watched the ad on of dove ye dove hai ya love hai on the left uh, cheek and the right cheek you apply uh, dove on the right cheek and the other other soap on the left cheek so what is the difference but they are the paired observation like match individual when you collect data from the same individual you have to go for pair test and when you collect data from the different individuals you have to go uh, you have to go for that is called independent so it is very difficult to decide whether it's a pair data or unpaired data dependent data or independent data so that you have to keep in mind whether it's a match like in most of the study case so crossover trial you must be knowing about crossover trial like we have in rcts we have different designs as parallel crossover but in crossover trial uh, same individuals will be receiving treatment a and treatment b so whether they will be considered as a independent data or independent data so that has to be decided properly whether data are dependent or independent derived from the match individual same individuals or from the different population and then that will that will tell you whether to go for pair test or unpair test that is very important then third question a third criteria or third filter was what type of data are being measured right what type of data are being measured there are nominal if you have nominal data you can go for maxima test if you have original data or the categories you can go for wilcoxon test quantitative wilcoxon i'll i'll explain all this test uh, how to apply this test and which type of test are there or if you have which data and which test are to be applied so data are to be made. i had already told you in the beginning of the lecture that data type data type study design and uh, uh, depend on independent data they decide which test are to be applied so that you should keep in mind then hypothesis testing you have so many tests available over here hypothesis testing parametric test and non parametric in parametric test you can have one sample t test z test two sample independent sample or pair sample i'll i'll explain uh, we have already seen one sample means what t test now uh, one sample t test uh, if you have a small size some small sample size then you can go for t test if you have large sample size you can go for z test right but generally um, the softwares tell give you t test only or uh, they do not have uh, for large and small samples they have t test only rather than z test one sample means what you have you have been given sample value you have been given population value and you have collected data from some one sample and it has to be compared with the population value one sample t test can be there two samples like when you have two samples then you have to go for independent whether it's a uh, independent sample or paired sample means what i just want to see the effect of chavan prash on the immunological parameters before and after the study but data has been collected from the same group of patient or same sample so that will be i'll go for paired sample there i'll be applying paired t test and i have a independent sample independent sample in immunological parameters after treatment uh, in group a and in group b so i have two different groups or independent sample then i'll go for independent or unpaired t test or z test it is like that then if we come to other side non parametric test may you have simple uh, one sample chi square kolmogorov milanov binomial or two samples may have independent right i'll explain one by one like where to go for chi square test man witney test or you have uh, sign rank test wilcoxon macnamar chi square and all chi square you must be knowing about chi square test also it is in our syllabus t test and chi square test are in our syllabus actually then will go normal test you know normal test or you you must be knowing about this normal curve or 68 95 99.7% rule that uh, we apply like 
it is it is said that if data follow normal distribution you can go continue in case of continuous variable if data follow normal distribution you can go for um, parametric test if your data do not follow normal distribution then you have to go for non parametric test otherwise in other non non continuous data or non continuous variable you have to go for uh, non parametric test so we have so many normal uh, like you cannot plot a graph all the time uh, for the available for the data now uh, for this uh, for the data given so we have various normality tests whether data for a normality test or not whether data pass normality test or not that has to be checked so we have this kolmogorov smirnov test lil lilford's corrected ks test shapiro wilco test anderson darling test kramer von mises mises test and all so many tests are there i know only these two tests kolmogorov smirnov test which are used generally and sometimes i use shapiro wilco test for small group a uh, small sample size i go for kolmogorov smirnov but the la last sample size i go for shapiro wilco test i know only this much difference of this and we i use only these two tests so now uh, whenever you have whenever you have a data continuous data mean the height weight blood pressure uh, continuous variables or measured facts you have to check whether your data follow normal distribution or not whether your data pass normal test or not then that thing will decide which test to be applied whether parametric or non parametric test okay so you know this normal distribution normal co data that mean plus or minus 1 st contains your 68% of data mean plus or minus 1.9 cst contains 95% of data and mean plus or minus um, 3 st contains your 99.7% of it almost all of those right so normal test the test mentioned above compare the scores in the sample normal distributed state of sample distribution is normal or not if the test is significant the distribution is non normal right means what you must be knowing about f test uh, variances variances means what variance is equal to standard like you uh, if you know the formula for standard deviation what is the formula for standard deviation sd is equal to under root sigma x minus x bar the whole square divided by n minus 1 like if you remove that square uh, square root sign it becomes variance variance is equal to sigma x minus x bar the whole square divided by n minus 1 so if you compare this sd1 sd1 square upon sd2 square or uh, variance 1 divided by variance 2 then we get f and we check it in unit normal distribution table so uh, the difference in two samples is uh, whether it is f is significant or not p value like f value significant or not depending on that you check whether the samples are derived from the same population or not if the data if the samples are not derived from the same population then you cannot variance test then you cannot apply parametric test also another thing is that right so uh, mainly what happens small samples most often pass normal test like if you have tried that thing that most of the times uh, small samples uh, like now uh, example animal testing in animal testing you will be having single sample single rat or single mice or single uh, data points uh, in one sample and you have to compare that these six points six data point they follow normal test normal test but if you go for large sample size in human being 30 40 60 70 they do not they may or may not follow normal distribution that you have to be cautious about that thing whether data follow normal test or not or data pass normal test or not right this we come to test one by one the most popular test which is used for analysis many a times is t test so all of most of the most of you must be knowing about this test kya is this mein a statistical test that is used to compare means of two groups like we compare the means of two groups or you can have single group also two sets of data actually to compare the means of two sets of data that is often used statistical testing that process or treatment actually has an effect on the population of interest or whether two groups are different from one another or not like it can be like single group like if it is example of a uh, weight weight loss due to lekhan basti if lekhan basti is given to n number of patients suffering from obesity right 
uh, in one group one group has received lekhan basti and another group has received a particular diet or they haven't received basti right in 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 within the group either we go for uh, within the group comparison or between the group comparison and in both the cases we use t test right it, it's a parametric test we all knew and therefore what are the assumptions to be followed the test data data are independent are normally distributed data and have a similar amount of variances mean the homogeneity variances means what both the data or both the samples are derived from the same population as i told you na f is equal to sd1 square upon sd2 square that both the data or both the samples are derived from the same population then only you can go for t test that homogeneity of variances has to be established no significant difference then where do we go for pair t test two sample t test or one sample t test like you must be knowing about pair t test and unpair t test if the groups come from a single population that is pair t test is to be applied means what measuring before and after an experiment result within the group comparison like weight of the patient before giving lekhan basti and weight of the patient after giving uh, uh, lekhan basti so we are comparing two data point before and after the treatment experimental treatment in same group of individual there we go for paired t test right when have two different groups one group has received lekhan basti and second group has received another gulu and all right so i just want to compare two groups after treatment two groups will be compared by independent t test or unpaired t test just keep this thing in mind when you have a single group and you are comparing before and after data we go for paired t test and when you have two different groups we go for unpaired t test right one sample t test is applied if there is one group being compared against the standard group one group but you have collected data at one point only at one point data you have collected and you compare that data with the sample population values in general population values then you can go for one sample t test it is also available on software another thing is that i i have already told you one tailed and two tailed test if you only care whether two populations are different from one another means on on positive or negative side so on left side or right right hand side so uh, better or worse or equal then you you will be operating on both sides of the curve there we apply two tail test but if you are not concerned about um, uh, you will be operating on only one side like i have given you example of uh, placebo controlled trial you will be operating on only one side it can be equal or better not worse than or on the lower side than the placebo so you will be applying one tail t test that you have to apply like when you say one tail t test 5% level of significance then in two tail test it will become 2.5 and 2.5 that you have to keep this thing in your mind that is important then paired ho gaya like we have seen paired t test and unpaired t test that is to be applied according to the data whether you have a single group or whether you have two groups for comparison right then we come to one way anova one way anova is analysis of variance we analyze the difference between the means of more than two groups we we are uh, in t test we are talking about only two groups group a treatment group and control group but you may have more than two groups also treatment a treatment b like a dosage like in dosage form or in animal studies animal studies they have four five six groups and all more than two groups and two different all these different groups are to be independent we are we cannot apply non pair t test so uh, what is the what is the uh, option or alternative for unpaired t test when you are more than two groups that is one way anova when you are dealing with only independent variable one independent variable you can go for one way anova we generally apply one way anova we ha i haven't gone through two way anova yet for dependent variables but when you have two groups you go for unpaired t test and when you have more than two groups you go for one way anova keep this in your mind right null hypothesis will be in this case in case of one way anova uh, is that there is no difference among group means alternatives will be obviously there is a difference between uh, or there at least one group differs significantly from overall mean of the dependent variable one group will be different from the other 
uh, we we just use this thing in case of uh, more than animals that is we use or you have more than two groups like three four five groups if we have in human cells also we go for one way anova test uh, anova test uh, f test for significance like we compare two or more groups together and therefore is there any problem am i audible clearly to all of you yes sir yes sir please continue okay thank you assumptions of no as i have told you in case of t test data data is to be independent data should follow normal distribution analysis of now of map homogeneity of parameters should be there here the same thing is here independence of observation normally distributed data and homogeneity of parameters see and the t test and one way anova are same only the difference is that when you have two groups we go for unpaired t test when you have more than two groups for comparison Between the group comparison, we apply one-way ANOVA or ANOVA test. So otherwise, assumptions are same. Then repeated measures ANOVA. ANOVA is there. Repeated measures ANOVA. What is repeated measures ANOVA? Like we get confused, huh? In one-way ANOVA and repeated measures ANOVA. Uh, in case of repeated measures ANOVA, means what? When you have more than two uh, more than two observations in the same group. See, repeated measures ANOVA is used when you have the same measure. that participants were related on at more than two time points means what i'll give you example like third t test third t test mein kya hota hai we apply third t test when you have before and after or two two sets of observations are there in case of two sets of observation we go for third t test but when you have uh, two more than two sets of observation means what we have mainly we have follow up studies follow up studies means what um uh, like uh, at before treatment the observations were like take like, for example of weight weight was on uh, on before treatment weight was weight of the patient was this much weight of the patient on follow up follow up one after 7 days after 15 days after 30 days or after one month like if it is the study will go for for lekhan not lekhan basti for nam um, for obesity means saule patient particular google has been given to them and that google will be given for 3 months and we follow up we take follow up of every 3 months or every one right so i if we take follow up on every month uh, so you will be having uh, of one group you will be observation before treatment month uh, at the end of day 30 day 60 and day 90 that is after treatment so you have four observation or uh, you have four observation and that have to be compared together so there we go for repeated measures anova means what when you have the same measure that participant were rated on one more than two time point when you compare participant at two time point like before treatment after treatment we go for pair t test but when you have more follow ups in between from the same group there we go for repeated measures anova right with only two time points pair t test will pair t test will be sufficient if you want to go for more time more times the measure repeated measures anova required right you can go for six weeks and all the example is given over here the example which i have given you you must have understood here another example is given if you wish to track the progress of an exercise program on participant by weighing them at the beginning of the study and then every week after that for six weeks like you will be having seven time points means before treatment and every at the end of every every week for six weeks so you have six of ob seven observations will be there from each patient from the same group there we will be going for repeated measures anova right then assumption random samples will be there independent observation normally distributed data same thing will be there see same pair t test unpaired t test uh, pair t test is equal to repeated measures anova and unpaired t test is equal to uh, one way anova only the number of observations will be different when you have only two observation we go for paired and unpaired t test and when you have more than two observation we go for repeated measures anova and one way anova that is different between t test so that is about your uh, we use uh, parametric test more or less we use only this much test for our data for md phd thesis which i have used many a times this test then we go for non parametric test 
it starts from wilcoxon sign rank test or match pair sign rank test what is wilcoxon match pair sign rank test like dependent sample stages it is similar to uh, it is said that the wilcoxon sign rank test is the non parametric of the uh, dependent sample t test is equal to uh when uh, if your data points you have before and after treatment if before and after observation uh then uh, if data follow normal distribution or it's a parametric data then we go for t test pair t test and if the data do not follow normal distribution then we go for wilcoxon sign rank test that we have w statistic wilcoxon rank sum test is used to to compare independent variables but we we do not wilcoxon rank sum test is mainly used for a one sample t test and what it is like one sample t test generally pair t test is equal to wilcoxon sign rank test in non parametric statistics i hope this is clear to all of you i'll be, i'll give you the comparison chart at the end of the lecture then what is friedman test friedman test is said that as it is same as repeated measures anova repeated measures anova me kya tha we have a, a group of, paired observation more than two more than two paired observation in a single group in that case we used to apply uh, in case of parametric test we used to apply repeated measures anova right in the same way in non parametric alternative is friedman test like when you have uh, you have taken uh, um, uh, severity of pain severity of pain mainly was scale and was scale do not follow was scale mainly uh, does not follow normal distribution like in that case the pain scale and uh, the study would go for four weeks and you have collected data from the patient at the beginning of the study day 0 day 7 day 14 day 21 and day 28 so you have five observations on the same patient so if you want to compare these five observation within the group then uh, and data do not follow normal distribution if data follow normal distribution then you would have gone then you would have gone for repeated measures and over but if data do not follow normal distribution then you have to go for non parametric test that is friedman test right the thing is given where do we use friedman test measuring the mean scores of subject during three or more time points or measuring the mean scores of subject under three different conditions right under three different conditions but the data is to be data is to be collected from the same group of individual that is pair data you have more than two pairs that is called as there we apply friedman test man witney test is equal to unpaired t test man witney u test is similar to unpaired t test unpaired t test is uh unpaired t test is uh, applied to parametric test applied to uh, different to find out the difference between two groups in the same way man witney test is a find is a non parametric test to find the difference between dependent variables of for two independent groups it compares whether the distribution of the dependent variable is the same for the two groups and therefore for the same population or not i hope you have understood when data for a normal distribution you have two groups to be compared you go for unpaired t test and if data do not follow normal distribution or you have a uh, ordinal data like i have told you uh, gradation of symptoms and all then you go for and with new u test that is different then kruskal valis test there is something uh, we have done one way anova test what is one way anova test one way anova test is a non parametric test to be applied when you have more than two groups 3 4 5 mainly i have to you give you a new example of animal test animal experiment where we have more than two groups like when you want to compare among the means of different groups we go for uh, unpaired t test un, uh, sorry uh one way anova in the same if data do not follow normal distribution then we go for kruskal valis test one way anova parametric kruskal valis non parametric just keep this thing in your mind only right we compare the mean ranks of the groups are the same right null hypothesis will be like whether there is no difference between the mean ranks of groups no significant difference among mean ranks of groups and alternate hypothesis will be there is a there is a significant difference among mean ranks of the group when you have more than two right so unpaired t test when you have two groups parametric test one way anova when you have more than two groups independent variables or you have uh, more than two groups and 
third thing when non parametric test when you have two more than two groups you go for pascal valley's test then maxima test maxima test maxima test is used to determine if there are differences on a dichotomous dependent variable between two related groups dichotomy test means what um yes no or you have positive negative a present absent it is like that mainly categorical data categorical data variable we go for maxima test dichotomous there uh, it there is test you can go for parity test also but it is similar to parity test but we have dichotomous instead of continuous dependent variable we have yes no generally we do not i haven't used maxima test regularly but it is in use right in case of dependent variable and dichotomous Uh, dichotomous means I know. Uh, I hope you have understood. Yes, no, positive, negative. The responses will be in the two way. Yes, no, right. Then chi-square test is a very popular test. We use. Uh, it's a non-parametric test, mainly used for not based on any assumptions. Uh, it is mostly common data in sequences. Like uh, I hope you know the type of uh, data. very well there we have a uh, counted fact or discrete data discrete data counted fact uh, i have i have uh, like uh, at the end of the study most of the times uh, we give oral assessment of therapy at the end of the study or at the end of the statistical part we give oral assessment of therapy or oral assessment of treatment in two groups means what how many patient got complete cure how many patient um, what uh, see no uh, Involvement, ma mark improvement, uh, moderate improvement, mild improvement, no improvement was there like that. We just uh, we just categorize patients at the end of the study depending on the, their response to the treatment. Like we have those numbers, number of patients. Means there was the discrete data, and we compare these two groups on depending on the overall assessment of therapy at the end of the treatment or at the end of the study. So there, that type of data is called as a uh, frequency in terms of frequency or discrete data. and we mostly we apply chi square test over there or we just want to compare the relationship between two data or uh, to uh, to uh, exposure outcome relationship and all immunized and got vaccinated and got covid positive unvaccinated and got covid positive and all uh, like all these things or smokers non smokers and lung cancer and no lung cancer and all association like so there we apply chi square test which is given by this carl pearson and we have different uh, applications of chi square test in statistics as uh, proportion association goodness of weight to a theorem right association uh, like uh, you must be proportion we use uh, less when you have two more than two groups and all association we have used many a times right uh, test of association to show association between two groups of or uh, association between exposure and outcome cause and effect relationship and all and goodness of fit to a theory whether data follow like uh, one example which is given in uh, in our dk margin and most of in statistical square one also that mm. that you know that uh, burning issue in india and most in in, in maharashtra also that we just want to now uh, uh, i'm giving the example of somebody asking about what is the goodness of fit to a theory like uh, the burning issue in india and and in maharashtra also that is female pesticide cases that disproportionate male and female ratio in india or maharashtra so what did it happen because of female pesticide cases and why does it happen to male pesticide cases because illegal sex determination like so what do, what can we do in that case whether the uh, actually male female ratio should be 50 to 50 50% in both the cases so we'll just take out the um, whether it fits up this is the theory this what is the theory that whether the data follow um, that the normal distribution is uh, that ratio is 50 is to 50 or not right so we'll just take out the male female ratio or the number of male, male births and female births in particular area and we apply and we'll try to uh, we'll compare it with the like observed values will be there expected values are 50 is to 50 right and we'll apply statistical test or chi square test and we'll see whether it is a significant difference or insignificant difference if it is the insignificant difference then it's okay then no uh, female pesticide cases are not there and all right but if it it raises the signal it this is it can raise the signal in both the ways huh? if male 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 proportion is more than the female female participant or 
both the way. And if you see that uh, female uh, participant or female births are very less compared to male births, and the difference is statistically significant, then it will raise the signal over there. That is one of the best examples of goodness of fit to a theory. In case of like you have some observed observation, observation, observed values, and expected values are there. Like whether it fits to the theory, established theory or not, that we check from the goodness of fit to a theory. The examples are given in your BK margin methods and techniques of biostatistics and statistics at square one also. You can refer those books. Okay. So I hope I have cleared your doubt. Then what are the this is the summary parametric and non-parametric tests. I have given you parametric test, pair t test. Then you have one group before and after observations, data follow normal distribution. It's a continuous data. Continuous data means measured fact. You can go for paired t test, right? On the other side, if your data do not follow normal distribution, it's an ordinal data, but it's a paired data. Paired data means before and after treatment in single group. You go for Wilcoxon batch pair sign tank test, right? Second condition, unpaired data. When you have two groups of data or two sets of data derived from the two groups, two different groups or independent groups, data follow normal distribution, and you have two groups only, then you go for unpaired data. Right? On the other side, data do not follow normal distribution. You have two sets of data derived from two different groups or independent data, independent groups, then you go for man with me test. Right? When you have more than uh, one group, but you have more than two observations, like follow-up studies, on follow-up studies and all, on, on three different observations, four different observations and all. So there you go for a repeated major ANOVA. On the other side, if your data do not follow normal distribution and you have different observation or ordinal data you have, like uh, pain scale, pain scale or any particular severity, cast and all symptom or severity of particular symptom and all, so that has been measured on different uh, on different groups, right? On different not different groups on different follow-up point or different time points. Then you go for Friedman test. One way ANOVA, you have more than two groups, and their data are to be compared, or data points are mean are to be compared. That is, we go for one way ANOVA, and on the other side, non-parameter if data do not follow normal distribution or norm, do not pass normal test. Then we go for Ruskal values test. So these are the pairs. Parametric test and non-parametric test. I try to simplify it whether you will go for parity test or Wilcoxon, unparity test or man with me, which test to be applied. Because obviously, as I told you, this is these are the filters now. These are the filters are to be applied. And if you apply those filters, you will come to a specific test to be applied to given data or the, the data which you have collected. Then various statistical softwares are there, which you can use on your own, or you can consult a statistician, biostatistician, preferably. So we have SPSS. I use GraphPad instead. GraphPad is a nine software. MATLAB is there. Our software is a Microsoft Excel. Many people are like Mohan Joshi. So he he uses this Microsoft Excel for uh, many uh, statistical operations and all. Epistat is there to find out sample size calculation and all. Epistat, many people use Epistat for simple uh, epidemiological studies, uh, analysis, data analysis. Use. So different, so many other softwares are also available. I know this much software which can be used for our analysis of data. Then um, the data, the software which I use, preferably GraphPad Instat. GraphPad Instat, we have like if we compare this, like compare mean or median then they will give you these numbers of tests one sample t test or will cox and random test two groups are there then you can go for unpaired t test pair t test man with me will cox and then you have more than two groups more than three to 26 groups you can go for one way anova repeated measures anova this value value statement test we have i try to cover most of the tests from this Next. then if you go for regression and correlation then it can be like you must be like, you must have done about types of correlation types of correlation we have linear correlation if you if you are looking for linear or pearson correlation like r value whether r is equal to 1 r is equal to minus 1 
r is equal to zero. R lies between zero and plus one, and R lies between minus one and zero. Depending on that, that R value, and depending on our coefficient for the correlation, that uh, coefficient, correlation coefficient. Depending on that, we have different types of correlation: perfect positive, perfect negative, and no absolute no correlation, moderately positive and moderately negative correlation. You just want to know, or you want to plot the graph of that, and you want to find out R value, and if whether this R value is statistically significant or not. You can go for that, and we have non-parametric correlation also, Spearman, that you can find out from here. Then we have contingency table, like in case of chi-square test, you have discrete data and all. You can have two rows and two groups also. You can have two rows and two groups, or you can have larger contingency table also. You can go for this feature like that test when you have two by two table, or you can go for larger tables. You can go chi-square test, chi-square test with yet correction. Yet correction is required when you have any of the Cell cell size is less than five. Then you have to go for yet correction. Then we have different other um, statistical operation or tests are there. Uh, relative risk, odds ratio, and all that that is also used. Like in so uh, we have different tests and which can be applied by using various statistical software. See, statistical software computer is computer in general. Our softwares are obedient servants. What is required? You have to apply your logic. You have to apply your knowledge to select the test. If you go wrong in selecting the test, resi study result would not be valid. Right? Or generalization would not be valid. I'll just take few things uh, are there which you can use for your studies. Like if you go for simple studies and all, you can go for odds ratio. You must have heard about odds ratio. Odds ratio is used for case control studies. I'll give you example that if you have selected patient or in general in class. In general, uh, in your class of hundred student, two hundred students, or in your college, if you, in your college, if you have five hundred students total, you just ask them how many of you take घर से बना हुआ खाना means home diet you follow you bring tiffin from the college home or you prefer uh, outside eating means what a canteen and all and do they suffer from hyperacidity or they do not suffer from hyperacidity you just want to know relationship between these two means what Our hypothesis will be that um, the people who carry their tiffin or who who eat uh, home homemade food, they suffer they they suffer from um, hyperacidity less compared to uh, people who eat outside food. Right. So it will be a cross section, or it will mostly it will be case control. So and then you you will prepare a two by two table, and this is called two by two exposure. Means what? Homemade food or outside food, suffering from hyperacidity, suffering not suffering from hyperacidity. Right? This is ABCD, and this ABCD OR ratio is about A upon C divided by B upon D. Means what? OR is come to be AD upon BC. This is AD upon BC, and uh, when you when you apply this formula, you will get three observations or you will get three outcomes as OR is equal to one. There is no relation between exposure and outcome. OR is greater than one means what? OR OR is greater than lesser than one means what? There is a relationship between exposure and outcome. But when you get OR is greater than one, that means the cause, the uh, the exposure is positive factor for the outcome. Like Virudh Dhar and Kushto, then OR will come more than one. But if you take immunization and suffering from a disease cases, immunization is a protective factor. In that case, OR will come less than one. So you have to check that OR. Depending on the OR value, you can interpret the results of the study. That is odds ratio. Other thing is that relative risk. Relative risk is used like it's like odds ratio, but it is used for um, you are predicting the risk in future. It is used for case uh, mainly for cross sectional studies or in future uh, cohort studies and all. Like you have like relative risk of developing lung cancer. Uh, next second line. Now um, the relative risk of developing lung cancer in smokers versus non-smokers. You will be predicting in future. So what happens? This exposure status event occurred, exposed, not exposed, event occurred, yes, no, like that. And this is given. Relative risk example is given. A upon A plus B, C upon C plus. It's like that. And if you apply this same logic is over here. Like both the formula, both the formula are given over here. Uh, the RR is equal to one. That means there is no relationship between exposure and outcome. RR is lesser than one. Means what? 
it's a protective factor exposure is a protective factor and rr is greater than one exposure is a uh, positive factor it is like that you can predict these are the very simple tests now obviously you can go for chi square test before that you can predict the things from by using odds ratio relative risk and all right so that is about this this is the summary healthcare professional like us healthcare professionals need to understand the basis rather than the techniques of bias statistics means what as a healthcare professional you need not to know the every detail of the study means what every detail of the uh, how to formulate and all like obviously we have these things in our in our syllabus but you need not to know each and every formula and all because the things are available on the internet the things are available on software and all but what is important how to give the test how to how to apply the test which test to be applied how to collect data and all so you should know the basis rather than the technique so therefore i haven't given you the formula formula of t test like i know the formula of t test like i uh, if you want to go for pair t test then what you'll do first you have to find out mean mean is equal to x bar is equal to sigma x upon n then you have to find out sd sd is equal to under root sigma x minus x bar the whole square divided by n minus 1 then you have to find out sc sc is equal to sd upon under root n in single group if you have two groups then sc is equal to under root sd1 square upon n1 plus sc2 square upon n2 then sc okay then t how will you find out t t is equal to mean upon sc or when you have two groups t is equal to uh, mean 1 minus mean 2 divided by sc of difference so we have to follow this test you must have solved this some manually in your test in your classes of md but like the software is available even microsoft excel when microsoft excel is available you need not to follow the test okay. you need not to follow you need not to memorize the formula but you know which test to be applied and which uh, uh, proper operation is to conduct okay. so therefore therefore that is the aim of this then next if you are not capable of conducting like most of the students they are not capable of uh, applying uh, using the statistical software applying the tests and to derive the results and all they go to a bias statistician it's my personal experience huh? that many students or many md phd students they and they consults bias statistician at the end of the study once they have collected data and we just go to data and what happens to this call in the statistician after the experiment is done maybe of maybe no more than maybe no more no more than asking him to perform a post mortem examination he may be able to say what the experiment died out like so if you are not confident about statistical part of your study it's better to consult bias statistician from the beginning of the synopsis means what whenever you will prepare synopsis you have to consult your bias statistician and when you start collecting data even uh, while making the uh, master chart like excel sheet uh, once you have to approve your master chart or uh, your uh, crf case record form from your guide and all that has to be checked by your bias statistician also Uh, depending on your case uh, crf and protocol uh, he will prepare a master chart draft master chart and this draft master chart has to be followed for recording of data organizing data and then only the uh, bias statistician will be able to apply appropriate test and he will be and you should be it is not just outsourcing you should not outsource uh, the statistical part to bias statistician you should be involved in the study you should be involved in the process because because bias decision will not come to come for your viva you will be facing viva on your own so you should be able to answer each and every query or uh, each and every question asked by your examiners so you should be involved in the process of uh, statistical analysis right so with this note i would like to thank organizers and listeners of this parametric and non parametric test i have tried to cover each every point because each test will take more than 1 hour if i go in detail but i try to cover it within 1 and 1 1 hour and 10 minutes i have taken 10 minutes extra but i try to cover each and every point which is necessary at this point of time or it's it's an introductory lecture you can read those points 
in detail from internet also you can contact me there. oh thank you thank you thanks a lot Okay, somebody asked me. Okay, okay, Devka sir, you told me to use Hindi and English, but आप तो समझा है सबको. Even though I because in our college and statistics, I haven't taught statistics in Hindi or like that. So obviously my PPT is very in English. Uh, Uh, thank you so much sir for your valuable lecture i request to students if you have any queries you can directly ask to the sir you can ask the sir example for independent variable like you can give example of a weight weight measured in two different groups weight measured in two groups the height measured in two different groups you want to compare that thing in two different groups so obviously you have to go for unpaired t test or one way anova test in case of non parametric data and in non, uh, in parametric data in non parametric you can go for proscal values or you can go for manual i am just going through a chat box yes sir there is a question which test is applicable for descriptive study in a single group someone asks uh, in in single group uh, we need not to apply a uh, test actually uh, like in descriptive studies there is no hypothesis so i have already made it, made it clear that you need not to apply if there is no hypo in descriptive studies we do not have hypothesis and if there is no hypothesis you need not to go for any statistical test there we just go for descriptive statistics descriptive statistics means for actual numbers and we will go for percent or more than that if you want to go further you can go for only a uh, chi square test in some cases but i think it is not required you can go for actual numbers and percentage only at the part of descriptive study okay so there is one more question for normal distribution please for parametric or non parametric normal distribution is applicable uh, only for parametric test and non non if data do not like we have continuous variables if you have continuous variables and if data follow normal distribution then you will go for parametric test and if your data do not follow normal distribution then you will go for non parametric test means what even if you have a data a data a data on weight weight of patients before and after the study or weight of patient group a and group b but if your data do not follow obviously ideally you have to go for paired unpaired or unpaired data but if your data do not follow normal distribution then you have to go for uh, man with me or a uh, wilcox and test uh, so data. there is one more question what is a regression coefficient uh, regression coefficient i haven't done b values used i haven't used but we use multiple regression actually when you want to see the effect of one variable on the various variable at a time multiple regression but i haven't used multiple regression in that b is called as a when, uh, how like correlation tells you the relationship between variables but regression it is like that uh, uh, once you have established the relationship between a and b how a will affect the b it is like that there we go for regression coefficient b but i haven't used it much I hope uh, I'll try to share my PPTs with you because nothing idam na mama. It is not only I have I have got all this information from like you know uh, the difference between data information, uh, knowledge and wisdom. What do we do? Everything this data is available on internet and in this in the era of Google, you can Google anything. You can get any information from the. What is our job as a teacher or as I am regular teacher? Okay. so uh, what is the what is i i'm always tell i always tell this thing to my students that we just what do we do we collect data information we collect data from various sources we arrange it as a information we we arrange and we just make out the meaning from that information collect like in information and to generate knowledge and we try to give that knowledge we try to pass on this knowledge to our students and that develops wisdom in in myself as well as in our school thank you
thank you so much dr vinay pawar sir for giving us such great knowledge on parametric and non parametric stress in a very simple way really uh, today's lecture is definitely helpful for the students and uh, helpful for their to clear their concepts and basic uh, basic knowledge thank you once again sir for giving your valuable time you. from your busy schedule thank you thanks a lot Yes, I would like to give a big thanks to Dr. Surya Vanshi sir, Dr. Gaurav Savarkar sir, Dr. Chaudhary sir, Dr. Chadurkar sir, and our ATA president, Dr. Krishna, uh, ATA student wing president, Dr. Krishna Devkar sir, for organizing such great lecture series for benevolence of students. Thank you everyone for joining today's lecture. Thank you everyone. So I concluded the session is over now. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.